Um, this video is going to introduce this uh, schematic, and it's one we'll be using for a few times over the, course of the rest of the course. And um, it is a transmitter block, a receiver block, and a channel block. So a transmitter and receiver, that should sound familiar. The, the channel is what happens to whatever signal comes out of the transmitter. Um, let's say you're doing a wireless uh, transmitter and receiver. That could be a cell phone, could be, you know, whatever, rate an actual radio. Um, but this transmitter, it, uh, if it's wireless, it, the signal goes through the air. And as it goes through the air, it, the signal gets attenuated and noise gets added and then it comes out the other side and, and goes to the receiver. In this case, I'm not modeling that noise and attenuation. I'm just, I just put a voltage uh, follower in uh, inside this box. So whatever comes into this box comes out of this box. But you can model anything in here. You can add noise, uh, again, attenuate it. If, I don't know, in some weird alternate universe, you can make it the signal bigger. Yeah, but this, yeah, this um, models whatever happens in the air. If this was a wired uh, system, in other words, the transmitter is connected to the receiver by a wire, then uh, a wire has res resistance and capacitance in it, and it actually filters the signal a little bit, so it gets rid of uh, high-frequency components of your signal, um, and um, that's what would come out the other side. So yeah, you get to model whatever medium you're transmitting through in this box. And if you're interested in transmitting through water, which is actually a physical wave, not an electromagnetic wave, but if you're transmitting through water, uh, that's actually a low frequency transmit set better there, low, low frequency physical wave. And if you want to know more about that, talk to Dr. Benson. Uh, that's what her PhD was on. So that's the channel. That's just where the signal gets transmitted through. Uh, let's look at the transmitter here. Transmitter has some fun things about it. Uh, to transmit something, you need to have a signal to transmit. And LT Spice lets you do uh, some neat things. And one of them is read in a music file. So this voltage source is actually reading a WAV file, a music file. And that is your input to um, your circuit. Uh, that's that's what get, is going to be getting transmitted. And if you look at the WAV file, um, unfortunately it's not totally realistic because WAV files, uh, their voltages are all between plus one volt and minus one volt. Um, um, and you, you might have a totally different input in, in real life, like, you know, <laughs> high voltage input, like I don't know, um, you know, five volts or something. That's not high high voltage. For those of you taking power courses, that's not high voltage, but it's high voltage for me. Um, yeah, so an, an actual signal might be, you know, a much higher amplitude, but WAV files are defined to be between one volt and negative one volt. Okay, um, I'll ignore the filter just for a second, or ah, might as well. Uh, so. Ideally, I'd have a nice clean signal here, and that's what I would transmit, and then the channel would introduce noise. But I wanted to keep your, I wanted to keep the input a secret, just so if you don't run this, you don't get to hear the message. So I have a, a already introduced uh, quite a bit of noise into this mystery signal. So if you go, if you unzip the, the zip file, that's posted on Canvas. Um, there will be a mystery message. Not all of these files will be in yours. You'll have a, a mystery, and it just sounds like buzzing. There's actually a signal in there, and the signal is much smaller than the noise, which is something that often happens in the channel. But since I wanted to keep this a secret, I put it. Yeah, I made. I put lots of noise into the WAV file. Um, so this filter right here which is the reason why your simula simulation takes so long, um, actually gives you the actual signal here. But uh, you can't listen to it here. Um, you have to transmit it 
In this, in, in this schematic, you have to transmit it, get it to the receiver, and then have the receiver, not actually the receiver that dumps the, the received signal. The received signal is output to another WAV file by this directive, by this SPICE directive, LT SPICE directive. Um, so that dumps it to a radio out dot wav file and when you run this you should get radio out um, dot wav um, and then you can listen to that i'm not going to let you i'm not going to play that for you because that's the goal of running the system okay so so we've got our wav file input you can connect it to your voltage source um, and then um, just to get to get rid of the the noise and the signal now i've got some kind of signal here, um, and um, I put it through this ideal component. This is an E component, and you can find E components in uh, just going to the uh, component library. Um, it's here, and I don't know if there's any difference other than this plus and minus being flipped here for the E2, uh, but E is a standard component in SPICE. Again, it's ideal, so you can't put it on a printed circuit board. You can't uh, put it into a, an actual circuit. That's just for use in simulation. Um, it's like uh, in, I don't know Verilog very well, but uh, it's like the, um, the weight. I can't remember what it's called in, in um, Verilog, but there's a, a weight where you get to um, fake a delay in your in your uh, when you set your um, input signals you can have one transition and then you wait a certain amount of time and then you can change your signals again um, that is an ideal construct and you can't put that onto an actual chip that's just there to make your um, test bed uh, test bench um, easy to to design Anyways, okay. Yes, this is an ideal component, and the way that ideal component works is it has one, two, three, four inputs, and uh, this allows you to do math. So, if you want to make a signal, if you, if you want to make a fake signal, but you want to be able to do some math on it, what happens is is that this A and B they get. Uh, B gets subtracted from A, and then the result of A minus B gets multiplied by some number. And this number, it could be negative 1 if you want to invert the difference. It could be 1,000. I think I have it at 1,250 to, um, to get the signal up to an amplitude that I can transmit it on the schematic. Let's just check that. So I have, so I set E to 1250 um, just to make sure the signal was big enough to go on. So this is a multiplier, um, multiplies the difference, and then you can shift the result of, of multiplying A minus B up or down by putting a value on C. And these are all voltages right here. So um, I could do... 5 volts minus 1 volt times 2, that gives me 8 volts. And then if I want to shift it up 100 volts, I could put 100 here, and then I get 108. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's the E component. There's some other uh, E components. This is a voltage controlled voltage source. Uh, there's um, some other components in there that are like, uh, I forget if they have all of them, but there's uh, the for in uh, that you often see in simulators are voltage controlled voltage source, in other words, voltage in, voltage out, a voltage con controlled current source, a current controlled voltage source, and a current controlled current source. So there's the ideal components like that that exist in many simulators. Okay, so now we've got the signal in, got it filtered out, so we've got our actual signal that we want to transmit here, and we put it through a fake ideal component. Again, can't go on a printed circuit board and can't go on a chip to get our, our AM. And 
that goes into a mixer block. So the mixer block inputs AM and FM. That's kind of gives you a hint of what those inputs are. The FM uh, modulates the frequency of the output of the signal and the AM controls the amplitude output of this component. Uh, there's two values you set. Oh, and this is also an ideal block. Let's go look where that goes from. Uh, go up to special functions and then all the way over and at the end here um, you have this modulate block. That's what I'm using. So the modulate block is FM, AM, and there's two values you set. If you right click on the modulate block, you can see in the value field, it has mark equal to 250K and space equal to one. Those are the two values you need to set to use this block. And what that means is there's an explanation up here if, if you'd like to do that instead, but the, um, the FM input at one volt, that will give you a frequency of whatever you set mark to. So uh, right now I have the uh, FM hardwired to one volt. So that means you know, if FM is equals one volt, then its output will be whatever mark is. So you, this particular setup, the way I have this set up, this will always have 250 kilohertz on its output. Space is the frequency output when you have zero volts on FM, on this FM input. So that means there will be one hertz on this output if I give this a zero volt input. Um, this is hardwired to one, so you never see that. But um, I needed to put some value in for that, um, so I just put one there. Um, and what this does is it, um, between zero volts and one volt, at zero volts, it outputs one hertz. At one volt, it outputs 250 kilohertz. Then um, there's a line between that one hertz and 250 kilohertz. So you can vary FM to get any point on that line between that one hertz and 250 kilohertz. And you can actually go above um, one volt. And then let's say you went to two volts, that would be a, a, um, like near 500 kilohertz. And if you went to uh, negative one, I don't know what that does. Mm. But if you went to like three volts on here, I believe it goes up to 750 kilohertz. So it's linearly proportional to, um, it just follows that line from one hertz to 250 kilohertz. So anyways, this is set for a default of 250 kilohertz out because FM set to one. And then the amplitude is controlled by the input from your WAV file. So we finally get out to here. Uh, this is um, your signal's been multiplied by 250 kilohertz, and this is an actually an ampl amplitude modulated signal being sent out on a signal of 250 kilohertz. And then we have an, a final E component here that just multiplies it by five again, so it has a little more power to go through the channel. Right. Um, I'm going to stop here. Um, one more, uh, one more, two more videos to go.